Okay, let's put together some clips for the very first time. Now, we've already uh, made our event, which is up here. We've made our project. And if you'll notice, then it's got a little clapper associated with this event. And that's our project associated with the event. Uh, and uh, and I will apologize because I've I went back and redid this to try and clarify it a bit more. So it's not going to look like what you have normally seen, but let's proceed anyway. The first thing we want to do is click on our event, which is in this case called project. And you see it's it's got so uh, it's got some projects up here, but uh, just scroll down here to we till we get to our media, which is in the event. And look here, it's I uh, named the project Project One First Build. Okay, so we're just starting to put our media down there. How in the world do we do that? Okay, well here's our video. Uh, here's and that's the long oral history right there. Uh, this is a still, a couple of stills, and then we have some more video down here and some audio. And there's just a uh, kind of a generator placeholder, uh, some video there that it generates in the program. Okay, so it couldn't be simpler. Uh, we're going to do some more uh, finesse as far as choosing clips a little bit later on. But first, let's just see how do we get the media down here to make a movie. Couldn't be simpler. We're just going to click and drag. Now, in this case, we have this is our oral history clip, and it's 14 minutes long. This is the selection that I made. And I'm going to repeat this over and over, but if you do the forward slash on your keyboard, it will play just the selection outlined in this yellow box. So I'm going to do that right now. Okay, good afternoon. Uh, today's date is March 26, 2013. This is Kenny Bain interviewing Mr. James Stringfellow for the Samuel Proctor Oral History Program. Okay, so let's just say, oh, I like that. And, uh, and again, we're going to worry about more detailed choosing of clips a little bit later on, but for right now, let's just see how we do this. So there's two ways. You see it turns into a hand. And uh, if I click on that, you'll see this little plus. Uh, well, uh, you could just you could click that and it would add it to it. So that's one way. I'm going to do Command Z, which you're going to be using a lot, and that just is the undo command. Okay, that was number one. Number two, uh, select it and press the letter E. Same thing, that's called appending. Now when you use the appending or indeed the plus method, it's going to go only one position and that's the very end of your clip. So let's do this one here. This is some more video. I'm just going to select and I'm going to do the plus. And you'll see it also appends. It goes to the end. Now I'm going to do Command Z to undo that. And I'm going to use the letter E. Same thing. It's exactly the same thing. Um, you know, it, it, it's, it's your choice how you want to do it. So I'm going to uh, undo that again by Command Z. Or I'm going to use the hand method. Just literally drag it right down there. And there we go. That's the third choice. So it's really easy to keep building and let's let's go back and find something else that's uh, some video well, well we'll take another piece I'm not going to be uh, thoughtful about my selection at this point I'm just gonna this is for demonstration and uh, so here uh, I I'm clicking that and it goes to the end um, and here's a still I'm clicking that pressing the letter E goes on your timeline and you see how easy that is. It just couldn't be easier. Here's a, um, a little video clip. So you could, this one is good because uh, you can actually see, just visually see where you want to stop and start. But that's not going to be the case on your oral histories. That's why we're going to go into that a little bit later uh, because it's all talking head and it looks alike and it's long. <laughs> so, so, uh, let's say I want to, I don't want to, if I use the plus sign here, you know, it's going to go to the end. Or if I press the letter E, you know, it's going to the end, but let's just say, Oh, I don't want it to go to the end this time. I want to put it like right here. So you see that I can put it right in, in front 
of this clip on the timeline and it pushes everything back. Boom, how about that? That's pretty cool. Uh, the same thing with this still, if you already have it on there, why you say, oh, I really wanted it here. It just couldn't be easier. Or, or you say, well, uh, I want it to cover up uh, part of what he's saying, so I'm going to put it up here, you see, and you see when I play over here, I'm just skimming over, it's called skimming, uh, where I'm just, I'm not clicking or anything, I'm just literally just brushing the mouse <laughs> across the timeline, and you can see it play, not in real time, you know, it goes as fast as, as your computer will allow if you just do it that fast. Um, okay, so it couldn't be easier. Well, what about audio? What about audio? Well, we have some audio right here. How would we do that? Well, it's the same principle. I can choose a piece out of the main clip. Now, if I did this, what would happen? Well, let's try it and see, but I bet you know what would happen. I'm going to click that little plus, and oh, it didn't happen like you thought, did it? It's It went to the beginning of the audio track. See, that's the difference. Um, so let's do another one just for fun, and let's just test that theory again. I'm pressing that. Aha, so our theory is right. So we have actually two kind of timelines going on, video and audio. Even though your video clip can have audio associated with it, and here's your audio. So I'm going to do Command-Z to undo the, both of those. And this time, uh, I'm going to take it and put it where I want to. Can I do that, do you think? I can. I can put it where I want to, underneath, just the same way as the video. So that's how you can manipulate your audio. Uh, okay. That said, let's talk about something else that's uh, very crucial, and that is trimming your clips. Well, in previous versions of iMovie, uh, anything below iMovie 10 you could not do what I'm about to show you and this is so cool this is a feature of higher end editing programs such as Final Cut Pro and Final Cut Pro could always do this but now you can do it too in iMovie 10 so let's just say we really don't we don't want this this clip all this long it's eight seconds how do we trim this uh, well simple just grab the end <laughs> And trim it that it, it just couldn't be simpler and uh, uh, that feature has only been available uh, in in uh, the, this version of iMovie 10 that came out in October of 2013 so by clicking up here in your timeline and pressing the spacebar we're going to play right through this and I'm going to warn you this might be a little loud here we go Two programs. And then it comes up there. Right now, we're not really paying attention to uh, our audio. You want to do your major build uh, of your clips first, and you're going to go and make separate passes over and over to tweak your timeline to get it the way you like it. But the first, the first build is simply putting these clips one after another in the order that you like and that is your first and don't worry so much about trimming the edges at this point uh, uh, it, it's that that comes later with the next pass and really audio tracks uh, I'm gonna just highlight this and press the delete key uh, audio is gonna come pretty close to last some of the last things you'll do because uh, you want to get this you want to get to your major your your first draft if you will uh, first Okay, and that is how you start building your timeline. Okay, so we've got a couple of things down here. And again, we can, uh, we just uh, click in there and press our space bar and it plays. And I'm starting and stopping by pressing the space bar. Now let's take a look at this middle clip. I've got this little bit of B-roll. B-roll is anything that is really kind of a filler. It's kind of, it, it plays underneath or over talking heads. You've seen it a million times. You may not have known it was called B-roll, but it's just secondary footage where the audio isn't so important to listen to.
Uh, so I've got this, the, it's five seconds of, of B-roll here, but it's not, it does, it's just there. Uh, I'm going to play it. The days roll. So I can shorten this. Remember, this is so cool. You have no idea how, how cool that is <laughs> because it's the first version that's offered that. So uh, now, uh, what do I have? Three seconds, and that's that's good. Um, so let's say that we want to lift this right up and, and see how that uh, goes into there. I'm going to put this over here. Watch this. When I play it through... Yes. This is I, that's called a jump cut when you see that. This is so this is where your B-roll really comes in handy because now you can play this. Born raised in Gainesville. This is Kenny Bing interviewing Mr. James. Now you see that's a much more uh, graceful transition into the next part. And you're going to use B-roll constantly, constantly. Okay, take a look here. There's two controls I want you to look at. Uh, these are your opacity sliders right here. And it doesn't matter if you grab the first one or the second one. They both uh, are tied together. So wait, I'm going to click and drag here and you see what happened. Uh, it's really fading in and it's a much more elegant transition. I'm going to play through. I was born and raised in Gainesville. This is Kenny Bain interviewing Mr. So it's not so sharp, but to tell you the truth, uh, in professional editing, they don't really use a whole lot of uh, fadings like that, but I don't know. I, I, I just would use it for personal taste. Also, look at the second one here. Uh, this is how you would raise and lower your volume. Okay. You can also use that slider down here. If I can grab it. And that fades your audio in, but here you can do it on either side. It's, I'm just trying to grab it there. There we go, I got it. So it fades your audio in and out, which is not is so David. important because it is B-roll here, and B-roll audio is secondary important, but it's good to have kind of a little bit of, of audio going on there. It's, it's up to you, very, very this is Kenny Bain, subjective. Okay, uh, so let's put this back down here. So it still maintained its, uh, let's see if it did, still maintained the audio but not the video. So it, it didn't really good. fade in and out. Uh, that's in the transitions. We're going to cover that uh, in a little while. Well, let's just take this step by step. Okay, here's something really, really cool. Uh, this clip, as we know, remember, this is just a representation of a much longer clip. Click it and uh, show clip trimmer right there. So look at this. This is cool. And look how, look at the, the cursor turned into this kind of slider. So what we're going to do is slide. You see what that is? It's sliding the entire length of that clip underneath there. So it's changing the end point and the out point at the same time. Well, why is this important? Well, because it's not changing the the total, it's not changing the length of your entire video at all. Uh, this is a really useful tool uh, when you get to the end and everything is all in place and you don't want to change the end because everything, I mean, the total, you don't want to change the total duration of your project because everything kind of falls out of place at that point. It's hard to imagine what I mean by that right now, but but you will. And, uh, and that's how you would just slide it under there, and then we're going to close that. And there we go. It, is, it's, it looks the same, but we have actually changed the endpoint and the out point at the same time without changing the duration of the entire project. And that is cool. Whereas here, if we just grab the end of that, why it does, look, it does change the duration, and that can be something you don't want to happen. So, I mean, it's useful to know that. Okay, well, uh, did you see how this process of building goes on and on and on? Let's take this still image here, and let's put this down. I'm just dragging it down. Now look at the little points here. Uh, it's that's where it, it's kind of sticking in is what I call it <laughs> um, and again you can drag 
the opacity sliders and with that that'll really do a nice graceful fade in uh, are you a Gainesville native or what brought you to Gainesville <clears throat> And that's really cool too. And you can certainly change the duration of that. Look at the opacity sliders kept their same, uh, uh, they kept their same uh, settings, parameters there. And you can move that around where, wherever you want. Um, uh, that is just so tremendous. <laughs> to, and you can even move it to the, to the end too if you wanted to. So. So there you go, and we're just playing that through. There's absolutely no audio under there. So now, that being said, there is a way to take the audio out of here. I don't, you know, you'll have to use this with caution. So what I'm doing here is I'm clicking on there, and essentially it's right clicking. So I'm holding down the control, and you can see that you can detach the audio. And there you go. You have to watch out though because you can actually get it out of sync. So right now we'll play through. Interviewing Mr. James Stringfellow for the Samuel Proctor Royal History Program. Although in this case there's no this way to really tell, is there? Uh, so you can take that around and, and put it wherever you want. Interviewing Mr. James Stringfellow for the Samuel Proctor. So and if you, you now watch out, I'm going to delete this, but watch what happened. It also deleted the audio. Why? It's because it was stuck on there. So I'm going to do Command C which is some to really learn, it undoes, it's undo, command C. But watch what happens if I stick this audio down here and then delete that. It's still there because it wasn't attached. So uh, you, can, you can put that like so. This is Kenny Bain interviewing Mr. James Stringfellow for the Samuel Proctor Royal History Program. So you can think of many, many, many times you, you might use that. I'm going to get rid of this. Another thing is, uh, I'm going to take just a little, I'm clicking and dragging. Now here's something that I found out by accident, but if you, if you literally, uh, this time you're going to have to use the hand and literally drag it, but if you drag it underneath, what it does is it gives you the audio only. The audio only, and there's no video. So that's another way you could do that. I'm playing the, the uh, rebuilding. Uh, how was the uh, rebuilding process? Well, uh, uh, Father Pitt. And you can go on, uh, you know, beyond that. That's that's something new too that you couldn't uh, do in Father previous Pittman, uh, versions. It would have just stopped. Uh, so you've got so many, so many more powerful tools available here. This is called compositing because what's playing under that? The rebuilding. Uh, how was the uh, rebuilding process? It's the audio, the video, and everything. So let's put, uh, let's make a little, um, let's put this up here again. And I'm going to put this like so. Let's see if it'll go another layer. I'm not sure it will. I'm just curious. No, it won't. So, so that's all you get. Uh, you just get, you just get two, two layers there. Uh, and that's one of the limitations of, of iMovie. Did you see what happened? It wouldn't. It would just won't let you go Rebuilding, more than that. Uh, how was the? Uh, yeah. So. Rebuilding. Uh, We're going to talk about the Ken Burns effect. That was that movement that's on that still. Uh, it automatically applies it, but we're not going to talk about that right now. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that out. And I'm going to delete that out. Uh, okay, so you see how easy, incredibly easy that is to, to composite. But even though we're having fun now, what is the first thing you're going to do? What is the first thing you're going to do? You're going to place these clips in the order you like. And let's, let's do another, just a real short one here. And I'm going to press the E to append, and it goes to the end. Let's make this a little bit shorter so, so I can... Maybe, uh, let's see. Let's take a look at these audio waveforms down here. This is worth noting. But uh, we've got them turned on, right? Show waveforms. And every time there's a blank, no one's talking. And that is a really, re really good place to end your clip. And you can do that over here too. So, playing through. Well, you didn't really say much there, but you get the idea. And you see down here, look, same thing. Look, here's a nice break. 
So I'm going to drag, uh, drag that over there, and let's start right there. Play by spacebar. Uh, are you a Gainesville native or? He said, ah, so let's drag that to there. You can literally kind of see that. So there we go. Are you a Gainesville native or what brought you to Gainesville? <clears throat> yes, I was born and raised in Gainesville. Okay, cool. So that's a really good little sound bite. And we just did it visually by looking at the waveforms. Okay, so we're building our clips one by one. And that's what you're going to do first. These, uh, we didn't really need these yet. I was just putting them in there for illustration. So what you're going to have at the end of the day, honestly, you're going to have, uh, you're going to have a whole lot of this and they all look alike. So <laughs> that's unusual and specific to what we're doing. And the only way, you, you know, the only saving grace is that you're not really doing a super long, like hours long. This would be just really not doable but since it's not that long I think you can manage it you know five ten minutes and uh, let's 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 make this even a little bit shorter because I wanted to show you that you say oh I really want this one to go there and that's how you would continue to arrange it and you say okay I want it to go a little bit shorter it's just awesome okay you say, okay, I forgot where this is, but I went a little bit more, but, you know, not, I, I know it's in the general vicinity, so what would you do? Click, and you do the reveal an event, and it tells you that it's right there. And why does it look so little? Well, you're going to have to, you're going to have to uh, kind of increase the uh, zoom in, essentially, is what that's doing. Okay. So it's really hard. Sometimes it's hard to grab if it's just too little. So that's how you tell where you are. Okay. And there's how you build your timeline.